In a Car with IPR is a new series by the Institute for Public Relations, where we talk to industry leaders to find out what makes them tick, discuss research, and ask them to look into their crystal ball to see what's in store for us. <laughs> hey! Hey! How are you? How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. I like your disco ball. Thank you. Nice little touch, huh? Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm here today with Linda Rutherford, SVP and CCO at Southwest Airlines. And we're here with our new episode of In a Car with IPR. And what we do is we talk to CCOs and find out what's going on in their world and where do they see the future of the industry. So thanks for joining us, Linda. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to Dallas, Texas. Thank you. So I think the first thing we have to do is ask you about your disco ball. You know, that was, a, uh, that was actually a gift from an outside agency that we work with on a regular basis, uh, congratulating me when I came into the SVP role. I jokingly said one day after um, we were working through some transition items that I'll know I have succeeded when there's a disco ball hanging in my office. And lo and behold, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There well, it is. It adds a nice touch and flavor. Well, it's very Southwest. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is first we're going to ask some questions about just general questions about how you got here. And then we're going to actually be in a flight simulator and actually fly a plane. Oh. So how was your, so, and you've been at Southwest, you were at uh, the Dallas Times-Herald. Yeah, I started my career, actually, uh, the, the reason I went to school is I wanted to be a newspaper reporter, and so um, got a degree in journalism and uh, worked for Newsweek magazine, actually, right out of college, and, and then uh, ultimately was working as a, a beat reporter um, covering the airline industry for the Dallas Times-Herald. Um, that paper no longer exists, but it was the other major metro paper that competed with the Dallas Morning News. And then you got this great table that we saw earlier. That yeah, I mean, it's really kind of cool. It's a it's a cocktail table. It's actually from the Dallas Press Club. And the reason I wanted that particular tabletop is it is from the last front page ever um, of the Dallas Times Herald, which of course was around for 109 years. Um, and I was proud that in that particular issue to have several byline stories um, because I was one of those people who came into work the last day that the paper. Uh, was going to exist or, or, or have a, a newspaper staff. Wow. And then you came to Southwest 26 years ago. Yes. So uh, tell June, me about that journey. Yeah, so June 1st, 1992, uh, my first day of work was actually to pack a suitcase and go fly to Columbus, Ohio, uh, because our CEO at the time, Herb Kelleher, was doing a chamber lunch, and we were helping to kind of put that event together, and we were going to be giving away airline tickets to business leaders, um, which was great fun. And I thought, wow, the first day of work, I don't actually even report to work. I'm, I have to go get on an airplane. Um, and the rest has just been an, an amazing ride, honestly. Um, the, the job is completely different. Uh, I was hired in as a public relations coordinator, so it was an entry-level position. And I was charged with creating special events and doing media relations. And um, I literally have just grown up here inside the organization. And now look at you. Well, now it's now, <laughs> I, yeah, it's it's been. You've made it. You have a disco ball <laughs> a hanging disco from ball. your ceiling. Hey, um, that's legit too. Um, but it's, it has it's a been switch. A lot of... <laughs> it has a switch on the wall. She has to have remote control. control. I'm like, no, no, I have a switch for that. <laughs> she has a switch. Um, but it's it's been it's been great fun. So now I get to work with all aspects of communication, all of our outreach, um, community activities, philanthropic activities. I get to work with a change leadership team, which I think has really helped make the company more change agile uh, when you think about how crazy the airline industry has, has been uh, and what's had to change and evolve. And then also I have the opportunity to work with our culture services department, which sounds kind of funny. I bet you there's not many companies that have a culture <laughs> services department, um, but these people really do work on uh, the care and feeding of our corporate culture and they work on celebrations and they work on ways, recognitions and reward programs um, to celebrate our employees when they reach various milestones. That's great. And so uh, along with the cultural culture services, Halloween is such a huge deal here at Southwest. Halloween is a major, yeah, yeah, Halloween is a major holiday here. Um, we, uh, interestingly enough, our two big holidays are Valentine's Day, which of course you would expect love. because of the heart logo and the love, uh, being the love airline, and then Halloween. It's just, you know, historically, um, you really give a lot of thought to your costume. Um, we have departments who compete vigorously for their skit or their theme. 
um, walk through and um, it is a day when we encourage our flight crews to get in on the fun as well. Our airports have decorating contests so um, everybody gets in on the fun and it's just it's a good opportunity to just stop and have some fun and fellowship. Planes still fly. Um, <laughs> don't get me wrong. We even ask our customers to kind of join in and have some fun with us as well but but it's just a day to sort of breathe and, and you know and enjoy Halloween. Well, so then you want to head over and fly some planes? Yeah, I think we should. Yeah, I think we should okay. get on to our next destination. Let's do it. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, so Tina, when's the last time you got to sit in a cockpit? It's been probably about 42 years. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> hey, we aim to please around here. I know, I love it. <laughs> so in 2014, Southwest unveiled a new logo and yes. look focused around love. How was that process? Tell me about it. What were some of the learnings from that? So it took about a year um, of exploration to kind of arrive at a good uh, brand iconography, basically, that would represent who we are. Um, and when uh, we used an outside agency to help us, uh, but when they came back with the tricolor heart logo, I mean, everybody just said, wow, nailed it. I mean, that's exactly who we are. Our employees have fully embraced it. Um, you know, our aim uh, over the years um, has been to increase brand recognition without needing the words Southwest. And ultimately, we hope that we can get to that heart logo and people think like they do about Apple. So this yeah. is great because I'm learning so much flight terminology. Well, that's all I know about this particular. <laughs> you don't the know what these indicators? <laughs> no, but I'm sure if I flipped a switch, I could turn on the autopilot so we could have a conversation. So yes, yes, fine. Let's Where is it? Let's pretend like that's the button. Okay. So is your favorite movie Airplane? Uh, one of my favorite comedy movies, for Mine sure. Mine too. And it was before I ever came to work at Southwest Airlines, so it's just kind of funny now. It's um, such a great movie. Well, you know, how can it not be? And, and, and you actually will hear some of that lingo here when people are in a cheeky mood. Do you say that? Uh, sure. Like, what's your vector, Victor? Over, over. Roger, <laughs> roger. So I did, uh, I was looking at some of the research and pay scale and looking at the rate of employee satisfaction in Southwest of the list had one of the highest rates of people who are highly satisfied working at Southwest. So then where do you go from here if you're at the top? Because I'm sure you just don't want to maintain. So how do you keep yeah. that momentum going? We, um, you know, our founder, Herb Kelleher, said you should never rest on your laurels because you'll get a thorn in your ass. <laughs> and it's a mantra we always remember. Um, and so just because we are scoring well in a particular metric or we're doing well operationally, that's never a moment to take a breath. That's that moment when you ask, okay, well, how does it get better? How do we make it better? How can we improve improve upon this. And so really having a mindset around continuous improvement uh, has been important for us. And, you know, we're constantly pulling our employees, whether it's through live meetings, uh, round tables, and we do a quarterly pulse survey just to kind of get a gauge of what they're thinking and feeling. Um, we want to be very plugged into the things that they're proud of, any frustrations they might be having, because that helps us focus on what we need to do to deliver for them, to help them do their jobs well, because when they do their jobs well, then the customers are served well. And then when the customers are served well, we think that's great for the bottom line because we earn repeat business. And of course, we're a publicly traded company, so then our shareholders love it too. So it's a virtuous circle for sure. So tell me about, so you talked about Twitter and all the things you're doing, and you do that through your listening center located at your corporate headquarters. Yes. So can you give us maybe um, just a brief overview of the listening center, what it is and, and how it works? Sure. So it's meant to be a corporate tool, but um, we have a listening center that's, you know, kind of encased in glass and has the technology you would think it, it, it does, but it's basically trolling the internet real time. It's offering up visuals um, a number of different ways so we can look at a word cloud, what are people saying about Southwest Airlines in the last 60 minutes? We can look at a real-time sort of flow of uh, Facebook posts and tweets. What are people saying about us right now? We can look at a geographic heat map. You know, are there conversations that are heating up in any particular part of the world? Um, we can take a look at and marry that with our operational statistics. So it's not unusual to see, you know, uh, conversations starting to bubble in Phoenix at the same time we look at Phoenix and we say, oh, we've got a haboob or a monsoon uh, that we're dealing with. And so that's causing some, you know, flight delays and some, and some travel disruption and be able to marry those two up very quickly. Welcome to Network Operations Control. It's so cool. Yeah, this is really the heartbeat of the airline. Um, but they here on the floor, they are looking at every aspect of our operation. So um, there are different, they're kind of broken into pods. Um, there are dispatchers who are working on certain segments, right, regions of the country. Um, we've got meteorologists. Uh, we've got folks that are looking at ground operations flow, so the aircraft movement um, on the ground um, as well as in the air. 
And then in the very center of the room here, we've got something called the, uh, the bridge. And that is literally a representative from a number of different operational areas. Uh, we basically, we call it integrated ops, but they're making collaborative decisions about the operation. So if we need to change a schedule up in a city because of weather, um, if we're seeing some sort of you know, disruption, um, they know about it generally first, and they're working through the potential solutions. Wow, this is really neat. Yeah, it's, a, uh, it's definitely um, state-of-the-art. It, we're very proud of it. Uh, we did quite a bit of studying of other uh, airlines, operation control centers, uh, when this one was built. So we just, uh, as you know, IPR just published a study with Peppercom where we looked at uh, how communication departments and functions and organizations are being impacted by changes and um, sort of social values and topics that we hear discussed every day. So for example, like immigration or a bathroom bill. I know Texas had one, North Carolina had one. Um, so Southwest has a social topics committee. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what that is and sure. what you do? Uh, like every company and organization, we were getting requests uh, to consider how we would get involved uh, in particular uh, political topics, uh, legal topics, um, and social issues. And so uh, about a little over a year ago, we created a, an ad hoc committee um, it has representation from communications, investor relations. Um, we've got our compliance area, diversity and inclusion, um, and our general counsel legal area. And we get together on a monthly basis, and we talk about uh, what kind of hot issues there might be coming up, um, whether or not Southwest Airlines should take a stand and, and then or engage, and then what that would look like. In the process of putting that group together, we needed a methodology to have the conversation because we didn't want to just get together and go, so what do you think? Um, so we actually created a dynamic PDF, basically, that asks a number of different impact questions. So we'll look at, let's, let's pretend it's, um, it's the bathroom bills. So we'll say, you know, are our customers impacted? Um, are our employees potentially impacted? Is there a positive or negative impact on our government uh, affairs relationships? Um, is the news media asking about it? Have, has someone specifically asked us to take a stance? And we can, those sort of based on all of our input kind of color code. And then at the end of that, it kind of gives us a direction uh, to have the conversation as a committee about whether or not we would recommend that Southwest Airlines get engaged on a particular issue. We are just a recommending body. Um, the CEO obviously has the ultimate decision, uh, but this definitely helps him know that we've thought about it from a number of different angles and are bringing forward a really good uh, recommendation. So I'd like to ask you a couple questions about the industry. Sure. That's okay. Um, so you are the chair of the board of trustees for the Institute for Public Relations. Yep. Uh, this is your second year and your last year, and then you'll move to the immediate past chair position. Right. Um, so why are you involved? And you're involved in a lot of different groups. I know you were the president of like uh, Texas Tech's Alumni Association and involved in many nonprofits. So what is it about IPR that you want to be involved in and, and chair this wonderful organization. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked really hard here at Southwest Airlines to get the team more comfortable with research methodologies uh, to understand why you would want to have measurable objectives uh, to be able to understand what insights we're getting from the data that we collect. And so um, be, being involved with IPR not only lets me champion what's happening for the profession, but then ways to bring that home to benefit my own team. So I think now we're going to go sit in a plane engine. I do. We, we managed to secure a plane, an airplane engine downstairs just for you. Only the best for IPR yeah. and, and the team. So thank you. Stay tuned. So now we're in an engine, and we're so close. We're so close to one another. It's like in a close car with IPR, hey, you like know. super close. Yeah. I'm glad it's you. So. Thank you. I'm glad it's you. Um, all right. So what we're going to do next is a lightning round. And it's a final round of questions, and it's a lightning round, and it's based on James Lipton, who's still alive, he's in his 90s, when he did Inside the Actor's Studio. Okay. Do you remember the show? Yes. It's like an hour long, um, and people tuned in. Is this the whole it. waffle or pancakes kind of thing? Sort of. Okay. What would you like, waffle or pancakes? Uh, definitely waffles. Yeah, I like waffles a lot, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I would also eat pancakes. <laughs> well, I would eat pancakes, too, but if given the choice, yeah. So James Lipton took this from... Uh, uh, Bernard Pivet. Um, I just like saying it that way. Okay. I just like to sound French. That's the only thing I could say. I, I don't like know food, any like French croissant. at all. That's food. 
I can do food and that guy. Cordon Bleu. Like Cordon Bleu. Yeah, yeah, yeah it counts. See? Yeah, so that, that's it. Uh, so I'm going to ask you some questions, okay. and then you can just um, answer them. Okay. Like questions. Like answer the questions <laughs> like you're going to ask, and I'll answer. Yes, exactly. You've done this before. I think I got this down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, first, what is your favorite word? Oh, gosh. Evervescent. Evervescent. What a great word. Yeah, I love that word. Have you ever been described as evervescent? No. Yeah, um, I aspire to be described that way. Um, I just like it. First of all, I'm a fan of champagne, and the first thing oh, I think I, of when I think of champagne is bubbles and then just the evervescence of it. Um, but I just think, I think that's a really cool word. All right, your least favorite word. Oh. What, are you going to say it? Moist. Oh, <laughs> you and, there's a lot of people I hate that like word. Moist. I hate that word. It sounds... Like yeah. The other one that drives me nuts during football season is penetration. I hate that word, too. <laughs> I just I think that's a ridiculous word, so I don't like that one either. I have to turn the sound down when I'm watching football. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, favorite, uh, favorite music artist? Favorite band? Yeah, artist. so <laughs> I'm old school, um, so I'm going to go with Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, man, Simon and Garfunkel's great. Yep. The Sound of Silence. Mm -hmm. So definitely. Are you with, uh, you know... Paul Simon or Art Garfunkel? Make your choice. Paul Simon. Who would you choose? Paul Simon. Mm -hmm. You just saw Paul Simon, didn't you? I did. I saw him at the beginning He's of really June. really great. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Nice. My daughter loves Simon and Garfunkel. And Fleetwood Mac, and she's seven. So. <gasps> Fleetwood Mac was, is also yeah, a fave. Yeah, she's Kind of a little more contemporary. She loves Stevie Nicks. But yeah. And who doesn't? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even Tucker loves Stevie Nicks. <laughs> He was just mouthing Stevie, Stevie Nicks over in the corner. So last question. Uh, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God? This is actually from, I don't write this question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You done good, girl. <laughs> Yay. All right, so this wraps up our episode of In a Car with IPR. Thank you so much, Linda, for having us here at the Southwest Airlines headquarters in Dallas. We had a great time today. Thanks for coming to visit. Yeah, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and look for more uh, In a Car with IPR videos to come. Thank you for watching this episode of In a Car with IPR. Want to make a tax-deductible contribution to support this series and fund research in the profession? please visit us at instituteforpr.org slash contribute.